everyone and welcome to another edition of 16 Minutes with Liz Ntunjira. Today we're going to turn our focus on politics and governance. And my guest today is Anthony Buluma, who is an aspirant in the upcoming parliamentary elections to be a member of parliament in Nambale constituency in Busia County and he is also the CEO of the Kenya Young Parliamentarian Association. I'm so happy to host you today. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you for making time. And I just tell us what drove you into politics and governance. Um, yeah, first of all, thank you for having me on your show uh, to premiere in uh, this very interesting conversation uh, that is targeting young people in their spaces. Uh, and my story emanates from such uh, because uh, I was first introduced into matters, politics and leadership when I was in primary school mm -hmm. where I was invited to be an advocate for children's rights. At that particular uh, age, I was I think in class 7 and I was exposed to you know, various statutes that speak to issues of children, uh, especially the Children's Act, the African Charter on the Welfare and Rights of Children, the UN Convention on the Rights of Children. As at that particular time, I had an opportunity to interact with such issues. And uh, uh, that in itself allowed me to begin to be a bit more critical on issues affecting humanity. And, and uh, it laid a solid foundation for my engagement into political issues and leadership. Thereafter, I was privileged again after high school to also serve as a president for the Youth Senate, in fact, a founding president. Immediately after the 2010 Constitution, we did create like a, a, a mock sort of platform for young people to mimic what goes on in the Senate, mm -hmm. because the Senate was created in the 2010 uh, Constitution. And I was privileged to also serve as a founding president and, and slowly got again engaged into active politics uh, in the year 2012, where I contested for member of county assembly here in Nairobi. Uh, I, my votes didn't match up, so I was number three. But uh, interestingly, it never served as a point of discouragement, but actually inspired me more to, to engage further into issues of leadership because while I was campaigning, and even when I was still serving as a president for children, I realized that our country, our country is in dire need of leadership. Mm -hmm. And that leadership will not be imported from anywhere else. I think one of the most confusing conversations that young people have nowadays is, ah, oh, I, can't, I can't participate in politics or governance or any leadership because of maybe some of the corruption cases that we have. Or sometimes people feel <coughs> like you need to have money to mm -hmm. run a campaign. Yeah. Can you demystify that for us? It's true, you need money even not just running a campaign, even to buy yourself a pair of shoes, you need money. Mm -hmm. Money is, you know, the, the medium of exchange, but it has never been an excuse for anybody to be successful in life. And I think uh, the best way to, uh, to, to explain it is all of us have a past, you know, that did not have money. You know, I wasn't brought up in a very privileged background. Mm -hmm. I grew up uh, from somebody who's eaten to the garbage, now I'm a CEO. But if I'd looked at all the obstacles that, uh, you know, culminate into conversations of, I need money, I would not have been as ambitious. Mm -hmm. I think the bigger picture for many of us young people who want to aspire into leadership, we must look at money just as another certificate, you know, in addition to your degrees and uh, KCPEs and KCSEs. Mm -hmm. It's just a means, it's a certificate to certify that this person can transact. But do I need like lots and lots of money to run I actually a don't think so. I, 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 it depends. You're emanating from what level of the society. Mm -hmm. There are those who probably are privileged enough to work with lots of money and, and they'll use it maybe to facilitate their, their, their political campaign activities and whatnot. But the absence of money is even sweeter in politics because that's when you have to be yourself. Because like I said, in 2012 when I contested, I didn't have money. All I had was one person who was convicted and I was ambitious and I had my ideas to sell. I remember many of my friends came through because I had, they had interacted with my leadership for a while. Mm -hmm. So what they would do is uh, people would volunteer cars 
I had a church that had volunteered a lorry. You can imagine a lorry with petrol. Mm -hmm. And they put speakers. So all I just needed to do was trade with what God had given me. And it's content. Mm -hmm. So I would go to the marketplaces and plead with women. Sometimes get them to cry because of my story. And, and that endeared me to many of the voters to an extent that I, you know, attracted a lot of votes as at that time. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that were it not for party politics, mm -hmm. for party politics are more superior to the issue of money mm -hmm. in politics mm -hmm. within the Kenyan context. Because like in our case, uh, the, the situation was split between ODM and TNA by then. So you were either on Uhuru's camp or Raila's camp. And voters were attracted to either camps, not the money that people were offering. Mm -hmm. So uh, money could have been a factor, but you know I diluted it by virtue of the ideas I had. And I think that's a spirit that most of us must embrace because if you trade politics on money, then you'll not be as productive as you imagined. And, and uh, you, you'll not even stand up for anything. You'll actually have your money stand up for you. In this 12th parliament, you have John Paul Muirigi. He was, in fact, I think by the time he was contesting, he was still fresh in the university. Mm -hmm. But he endeared himself to the community, and the people loved him for what he was doing and what he stood for, and, and they rewarded him with the position of member of parliament. You remember his story? having even the president to donate a car yeah. because yeah. he had to travel by Matatu to parliament. And, and that's, we are not used to it. And I think there are many other numerous occasions, even at the county assembly level, where people have been elected with no money, you know, or with very little resources. Yeah. And, and they have proven us wrong that it's not just always about money. Money is not everything. And I'm so happy yeah. that this narrative is changing and there you had it. Yeah. And because we knew you were coming in today as our guest, yeah. we ran a poll within our network mm -hmm. um, of young people and about uh, uh, 300 of them responded to it. We had a couple of questions for them. Mm -hmm. uh, the network has about um, 3,000 young people. Mm -hmm. And we asked, do you have a voter's card? Mm -hmm. And 73.4% of the young people within mm -hmm. the network said, yes, they do, mm -hmm. with 26.6% saying no. Mm -hmm. We also asked, have you ever voted in any election? 73.4% mm -hmm. said yes, and 26.6% mm -hmm. said no. Are you a member of any political party? 92.1% um, said no, mm -hmm. and 7.9% said yes. And the final question was, do you read party manifestos before choosing who to vote for? Mm -hmm. And 56.8% said no, while 43.2% said yes. Wow. Do those numbers shock you? Quite. Some do. Uh, some do, uh, like like I like the one on uh, voters' card. I mean, vote, registered voters. Mm -hmm. th those those are true reflection. Many young people have registered as voters. Uh, the statistics on political parties. I think many don't find home in most of the political parties because uh, of uh, obvious reasons. You know, most political parties in Kenya are uh, owned by individuals. They don't have very clear mm -hmm. structures and systems. Mm -hmm. In fact, now is when we are trying as Kenya Young Parliamentarians Association to strengthen the capacity of the youth wings within those political parties so that they become more attractive to many more young people who wish to engage in politics. Some don't even want direct uh, engagement in policy. They just want to influence policies of those political parties, mm -hmm. but they don't have avenues. So I, I quite identify with those statistics uh, as, as a true reflection of the state of affairs in Kenya as far as politics is concerned. But they also feed us with a lot of wisdom because uh, what was the 92% was? The 92.1% was people who are not members of any political yes, party. Yes, you can actually see. Yet, uh, if you look at the distribution in parliament, you can actually count how many independent uh, MPs are there. Mm. Uh, but a majority is purely drawn from uh, political formations. So that means many young people have been left out of you know, the decision making mm. by virtue of not being part of political parties because parties come to push party interest within the spaces of parliament. Things are moving from you know just about who has the biggest wallet to who is really invested in our community, who wants to change and uplift the community members. And there's something that really resonated. Are we really um, 
tailoring our manifestos, whatever it is, or our campaigns to the needs of the people, not mm -hmm. what you think they want, mm -hmm. but what they have told you mm -hmm. that they require. Mm -hmm. um, maybe my my other question is, what are your some of your fears as now we're in the campaign season with mm -hmm the elections just around the corner what are some of your challenges that you're experiencing and what opportunities do you foresee i think the obvious one is uh, my votes must match this time round. that's the only fear i have mm -hmm. <laughs> so that i'm not number two or three mm -hmm. i want to be number one mm -hmm. so that would be the first fear but uh off and beyond that i think the political temperatures are boiling up quite fast uh, and and you can actually see how conversations are shaping up there is an array of, you know, a lot of confusion uh, when it comes to the political direction that the country is taking. And, and amidst all this, uh, the young people are in the middle of this. The biggest concern is, you know, sometimes with leadership, where mm. in a country where the mean age is 19, mm. um, all the cabinet secretaries, and I'm talking about the cabinet secretaries, yeah. not any other position, all of them are over 50. Mm -hmm. Right. I know the, the mentions of the assistants or the PSs. Um, you did mention yourself 51 members of parliament, parliament yeah. in the Kenya, um, Young in the association. Yeah. That's still not a figure that we yeah. can work with. It doesn't match, you know, the national uh, demography yeah. in terms of a population that 60 percent and above are young people in parliament. You would put it at uh, we are merely even less than 10 percent. Of the entire population in parliament so even when you're trying to push the youth conversation sometimes there are many limitations you know mm -hmm. we are not able to make it exactly a priority issue mm -hmm. for parliament but we've done our best we've really tried to insist through our membership you know sponsored numerous pieces of legislation just to try and and, and force the youth agenda in parliament and i think we have a good parliament that has been very receptive but uh, more needs to be done mm -hmm. um, over and beyond that, I think there is a philosophy or a quote by Albert Einstein that guides my attitude in life. Mm -hmm. And there is something that he said uh, about uh, what people need to do in life. He said that the significant problems you face can never be solved with the thinking that caused that problem. Mm -hmm. For us to actually address the problem, you have to ascend to higher thinking. And I think that's where we are. You asked me about opportunities ahead. 2022 elections is an opportunity mm -hmm. and I'm happy that uh, I'm getting feedback that many young people will actually be contesting for various seats at all levels, you know, irrespective of the challenge. For young people who are still not convinced with the system because we see the application of justice not equitable mm. um, in terms of, you know, just the other day we lost two very young boys yeah. um, to think. police brutality mm. um, and yet we see campaigns, right, where yeah people are, you know, not following the protocols of COVID-19. And this really plays a lot to young people because they mm. feel tired, they feel neglected, they feel just overly overwhelmed with mm. everything that is happening. What would you implore them to, to mm. do in terms of, it's okay, it's, these things are happening, but let's look at the glass half full instead mm. of half empty. Mm. You know what uh, J.F. Kennedy told the Americans in uh, one of his remarks is, ask not what your country can do for you. The most important question is, what can you do for your country? And I've told you, lead leadership for me is, has been a personal journey, you know? Mm -hmm. It's something that, it's not something that I was trained in school or in some classroom. I have grown knowing that leadership is about identifying a challenge, prescribing a solution, and executing. Uh, the decision. So I think we are at that space. Amidst these challenges, that is merely to tell young people that these challenges present an opportunity for the real leaders to emerge for Kenya. Again, we must also remind, and I'm sorry I keep quoting some of the... It's okay, I, don't worry. I, like I also live my life through like, many, many quotes. <laughs> yeah, I like interacting with most of these uh, remarks by some of the giants mm -hmm. who are there. In one of them was uh, the civil rights uh, leader for the blacks, uh, Martin Luther King. King yeah. And he said, freedom will never be given voluntarily by the oppressor. The oppressed must demand for it. And I think young people, where they see fault, it is for them to actually demand to correct that. Because uh, if we sit back and imagine that somebody else will solve what 
you see as a challenge today, then you are lying to yourself. Heroes of our time, heroes that we celebrate, are those who stood up in times of crisis. And I think we are at a political crisis in Kenya, but it presents an opportunity for us to actually arise, awaken, and shape the destiny of our country. We're very grateful for your time. Thank I'm you. also grateful. And congratulations. This is a very good book. Thank you. I have uh, purposed that I will also have it in my <laughs> office. Yes. Yeah, so that those many young people who come, even when I'm no longer the CEO, will always have to interact Thank with, you. You know, Thank all this. You. This, is, this is really good. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate and it. And I am sure as a country, we are proud of you. Oh, thank so, you. <laughs> so let me also put on the, my cape as the CEO and say, on behalf of the young parliamentarians of Kenya, congratulations oh, thank for you. this job well done. Thank you. Thank and you so much. it's an interesting read. Encourage many young people to actually interact with this. I, I yeah. really truly Hashtag youth can. Hashtag youth can. Yeah. I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. I've taken over your show. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Until yeah. next time, guys. And please make sure you get a voter's card. Very important. Be an active member of, of a political know. party. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. And remember to vote.